debate what America's energy policy should be. We libertarians say, what are you even talking about? Government shouldn't have an energy policy. We don't have a potato chip policy or a computer policy. The free market takes care of such things. If you let it work its magic, if there's a good new form of energy, people will invest in it, develop it. The best government energy policy is to butt out, but government doesn't. So, Coke Industries is a giant private company deeply involved in many parts of the energy business. Coke gets help from government. They benefit from ethanol subsidies, energy tax credits, and regulations that make it hard for new oil refineries to open that would compete with them. And it's disgusting that they get this help. And Coke's spokeswoman is here with us now, Nancy Fotenhauer, and she surprisingly is here to say that she agrees that it's disgusting and you don't want this government help? Absolutely not. We believe that the best thing, as you said, the government could do is get the heck out of the way. And then what they're doing right now is, is basically tying our hands. And we believe that if you want lower cost, more affordable energy, and, and really to have the best investment, then government ain't the person who should be, or the entity that should be determining that course. <laughs> and you're saying this despite receiving what must be bill millions, billions of dollars in handouts in a f some form or another from taxpayers? Well, let's put it this way. We produce 400 million gallons of ethanol a year and yet support eliminating the ethanol tax credits. We just think that it is a completely perverse influence. I don't even know that that industry would exist if it weren't for government intervention. So how can you call it perverse? I look at things like our leaders in Congress. In 2005, they passed the Energy Policy Act. It included a bunch of new ethanol subsidies. And one congresswoman who pushed it said, the goal is to achieve total independence from foreign oil in 10 years. And then Senator Barack Obama said, it'll give us fuel that'll be grown in the cornfields of Illinois not imported from the deserts of the Middle East. So that sounds good. It'll reduce, it'll make us independent. And, and it did nothing that they promised. In fact, it was a trifecta of horrible policy. It was mandates, so we were forced to produce it and sell it. Americans had to buy it. They, they jiggered the tax code in order to send false signals through the pricing mechanisms. And then they penalized well, explain things. Explain that. False signals false to the sig pricing mechanism. Well, prices convey information. So anytime government policy it manipulates that information. We're basically getting false signals. So capital and the is The information is important because when prices go up, exactly. pr people produce more of things. Right. So capital flows in the wrong direction, if you will. It flows where government wants it or politically favored industries are rather than to the most productive sectors. So ethanol policy was lousy economic policy, lousy energy policy, and lousy environmental policy. And <laughs> audience agrees. <laughs> And your bosses don't need the money. They're each worth, according to Forbes, about $22 billion. These are the Koch brothers. And I disclose here I happen to know them and like them and agree with them. And I just find it refreshing when there are capitalists who actually say we should have free markets. Because so often the worst enemies of capitalism are businessmen who want special deals. Yeah, no, beware the person who says, I'm not for big government unless it's my form of big government, and that's what's happening frequently. Where they basically say, we don't want the government in, we don't want the government to get in our way except for, I mean, listen for that, because that's usually a signal that somebody's lying in we're gonna make pockets. clean air, or we're gonna <laughs> right, reduce right. our dependence, mm -hmm. and it doesn't. And your bosses are now the new enemy of the left. They're the poster boys. I uh, Some samples here. David Koch is the poster child representing everything that's wrong in America. Another says he, they are symbols of the unholy alliance between business and state. I mean, the opposite's true in their case. I was just thinking, okay, David Koch, probably the largest cancer research donor in the country, if not the globe, like a 250, so I mean, he's clearly not an evil person. Charles and David have created this business that has, employs about 50,000 Americans across 46 states, and I could not be prouder than to work for them. They are threatening to create a gruesome, creepy, and twisted future of our society. Oh, it's so gruesome and twisted to get government out of the way. <laughs> Most recently, it's the natural gas industry that's been asking for subsidies. Here's a commercial from the American Natural Gas Association.
Did you know that today, about a quarter of all new transit buses use clean American natural gas? We have more natural gas than Saudi Arabia has oil. So how come we're not using it even more? More. They want more. So what they want are subsidies to be given to gas stations so they will install natural gas pumps. But what's odd about that is that they have this other ad where they talk about how Los Angeles, New York, and Kansas City already use more natural gas in their vehicles because it's cheaper. The price of the pump? About half what you pay for traditional gasoline. Fueling stations are springing up across the country. So, if it's already happening, why do they ask for more government support? That would be because we're not doing what they want. Enough of us are not. I mean, look at this. Natural gas is cheap. It's abundant. You can already buy natural gas-powered vehicles. The market, uh, the takes market care has of it. taken care of that. The, the people who would benefit from this policy, however, would prefer us to be doing it in greater numbers. Now, we believe that doing something like that artificially spikes demand, raises prices, it's an indirect tax on consumers. And by the way, about 50% of American households use natural gas to heat their homes. 39 million of us cook our dinner with it. Why on earth should we face higher prices just because enough of us aren't driving natural gas vehicles? Higher taxes <laughs> to pay for. It. Thank you, Nancy Fotenhauer. When we come back, more on what America would look like if I were in charge.